West Philadelphia, born and raised. That's where my story started. Both my mom and my dad, by the time I was uh, born, uh, they, were, they were both uh, faithfully practicing Islam. A lot of people in my parents' generation were influenced by that. Malcolm X was a huge figure in that because Nation Islam was addressing the issues and the problems that the communities of color were facing. One of my memories of being in Philly is walking up to the mosque and hearing the call to prayer all the time, lay out the rug and, and, and know what to say, speaking in Arabic to God, like all those types of things, even knowing how to, to wash properly before I went in to pray, fasting, all those things like I learned from my older brother Sharif and from my dad. My whole identity started to be shaped around Islam. My mom and dad had split for a long time ago, and so we moved to uh, Delaware for a brief time and then New Jersey because my dad's father lived in New Jersey. In the summer times, he would pick us up for vacation Bible school and, you know, taking us to church on Sundays. And all of it was for him wanting to spend time with us, but also I would find out is him just wanting to introduce us to Jesus. My first exposure to walking in vacation Bible school was very different from walking into a mosque. Everybody knows about Jesus. Everybody knows about worship songs. I don't know any of these things. And so it feels very uh, foreign to me to walk into that space and to not know anything and to have this different way of relating to God. My experience in Islam, for me, it felt like boundaries and, and burdens. Walking into a church and seeing so much freedom felt so much different. One of the questions I'm asking is, why in a household where we speak English every day, are we speaking to God in Arabic, right? So that was a question that was always kind of going through my mind of like, this is the way I relate to God. How come God doesn't hear me in English if that's what me and my parents and my brother and sister, we all speak in that language, right? And one of the car rides that we took, my grandfather said to me, we get into this argument about, about who God is. Mind you, I'm, I'm 12 years old, but I'm very passionate about what my parents have taught me and what I believe about God. And so we start to get into this argument. I tell him, you know, Allah is God and Allah the word means God, right? And I've been told that. And uh, that means our gods are the same. He rebuttals and says that our gods are not the same. And he said that uh, he could pray right now as he was driving in the car. And he knows that God would not only hear him, but to answer his prayers. He shared the gospel with me. And what I remember about what he shared mostly was that those who knew Jesus would be uh, with him in heaven forever. And those who didn't would go to hell. And, and that everything was about this personal relationship with Jesus. And so for me, I feel like I don't think I have a personal relationship with God. I think what I've had is not anything personal. It doesn't feel relational at all. I prayed that, that day to receive Christ and then asked a lot of questions because I didn't know all of what it meant to follow Jesus. My mom, she was disappointed. I told my dad and my dad felt like his dad kind of stepped in where what I was experiencing was something that was influenced heavily by my grandfather and not necessarily my own. Whereas I felt like this was my own decision. And then my older brother had them probably the most drastic response of them all. He just broke down crying the first thing uh, when I told him. He had studied uh, in, in Egypt under like Arabic scholars and studies the Quran and reads in Arabic. And so he knows that at that point when I said that, that I had made a decision to now divorce myself from Islam and there's no coming back from that. It was like betrayal, disbelief, and just unbelievable sadness. Yeah, it was hard because, I mean, after I made that decision, I didn't automatically start going to church. Uh, I, I had a Bible, but I, I tried to understand it as best I could. Well, I feel the weight of my sin, and I feel like I need to go someplace where I can deal with that. And so when I've been moving into college, um, my mom ironically mentions that there's a, she saw a poster of a Christian fellowship that was meeting. And so I go, and they start talking about the fact that God loves us and he could love us in spite of our sin. And to say that God loved me despite my sin and that he could um, walk with me in the midst of something that I felt so dirty and so unapproachable and so um, just shameful uh, was attractive to me. And so I uh, left the meeting early, uh, called my grandfather and told him like, I get it, I get it, I finally get it, you know? And so things really started to change. And then I started to see what it looked like to really like walk with Jesus intimately. Is your grandfather still alive? No, he passed in 2013. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would you say that you were still 
Man, I think I would, I would thank him for sharing with me the most precious gift that, has ever, that I've ever been given, that has helped me to persevere through so many uh, hard times. Man, I, I was running hard in what I was raised in and what I was taught and what my family told me. And I thought I knew the truth. And uh, all I know is that God found me, you know? Like, he came and sought me out. I found the truth. <laughs>